Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is August the 20th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, I end every video by saying I love you, but I truly want you to know that I care about your growth in the Lord Jesus. I care about your obedience to his word, and I truly do love you and seek to provide you inspiration day by day that will help you along your journey and in your walk with our Messiah. Now, before we look at our text, you've probably noticed that there is a difference in the thumbnail for one a day. And the only reason for that is YouTube is not allowing me to attach the proper thumbnail. So as soon as YouTube corrects that, we will be back to the original one a day thumbnail, which is the orangish type logo with the person kneeling before the Lord Jesus. I just didn't want you to be confused by that. Well, our text today is going to be taken from Luke chapter 11, and we're going to look at verse 1. Let me ask you a question. Do you know what the Lord's Prayer is? Most people would say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, continuing on, correct? And that's what Luke chapter 11 verse 1 is about. It says, It came to pass that as, as he, Jesus, was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Now, Jesus was praying. He finishes his prayer, and one of the disciples approaches him and says, teach me to pray like that. Why? Because there was something very personal and something very intimate about the way that Jesus communicated with the Father. It wasn't your ordinary, religious, orthodoxical Jewish prayer. There was something very intimate about it, as from a son to a father. And this disciple wanted to be able to experience that personal relationship that Jesus had with the Father. And that's the beauty of the Holy Spirit, because that's what he does. He teaches us how to have an intimate relationship with, with the Father. But that's not the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is actually found in John and chapter 17. Now, Jesus is about to go to Calvary. He is fully aware of each and every detail that will take place in the amount of suffering that he is about to endure, from his beard being pulled out, to being spit upon, to being mocked and ridiculed, beaten to a pulp, and eventually hung upon a cross. He's fully aware of each of these things. And yet he begins chapter 17 and says, verse 1, These words spake Jesus, and he lifted up his eyes to heaven. And he said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Notice that Jesus isn't focused upon the torture and the suffering, but he's focused upon the Father being glorified and honored during this time. He says in verse 2, as you have given him power, speaking of himself, as you have given the Son power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And in verse 3, Jesus is going to explain what that life eternal is all about. He says, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory of which I had with thee before the world was. Now, our minds can race a thousand different directions on what exactly that means, but we know that Jesus was glorified upon the cross because when he hung his head and gave his life up, no one took it from him. When he gave his life up, he gave up the ghost. 
the Roman soldier beneath the cross looked up and said, truly, this was the Son of God. Why? Because the glory of the Father was seen in the humility. The glory of the Father was seen in the forgiveness that was being offered even to those who were driving the nails into his hands. He didn't curse them. He didn't lash out at them. He offered up prayers on their behalf that they would be forgiven for the deed just done. And so the Father is glorified through the person of Jesus Christ by the sacrificial manner in which he lived his life and in which he gave his life. So many today who call themselves Christians are ready to take up arms and fight back. That wasn't the way of the master, friends. And because of that, the glory of God was seen upon him, just as with Stephen. When Stephen was being stoned to death, and he looked into the heavens and said, I see the Son of God sitting at the right hand of the Father. Glory shone upon his face. Why? Because of humility. Jesus' glory isn't in his power to call 10,000 angels. Jesus' glory was seen by hanging upon a cross and bleeding to death, being shamed, humiliated, mocked, and scorned, not just by the Roman officials, the Roman soldiers, but by his very people, his own bloodline, rejected and despised, and yet love poured from each drop of that blood. And it is because of that blood, it is because of his sacrifice that we have entrance into the kingdom, that we have acceptance by the Father, and that our sins can be forgiven. And that, my friends, is the glory of Jesus. And through that glory, he brings glory to the Father. And so how today are we to allow our lights to shine in the same act of humility, sacrifice, forgiveness. It is by these elements of attitude or character that we look different from the world because the world's ready to fight back. The world's ready to defend itself, but we are the people of God and we have been called to a life of sacrifice, humility, abasement, forgiveness, and love. And so when you hear someone speak of the Lord's Prayer, remember his prayer is truly and actually found in John chapter 17. Now we'll continue with the rest of this prayer in the days ahead, but for today, let's end right here. And just as Jesus sought to glorify the Father through his sacrifice and humility, so let us be willing to do the same. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you're here again this morning. It truly is a blessing to bring you the Word of God each day and to know that you are lifting me up in prayer and remembering me in your times with the Father. Now, as He wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you, and I'll see you on the next video.